Back in early 2015, I fell in love with the chateau I found online. I then had to convince my other half to give up our London life and move to rural France. To my surprise, she said yes, and a year later said yes again at our wedding at the chateau we now called our home. It's just us two and our husky lightning. And now, of course, a few animals who seem to have joined us along the way. It's such a beautiful place to live, so we decided to share it with everyone. It's obviously a lot of hard work for just us two. It's not always a fairy tale, and we don't always get it right. But it's all fantastic fun along the way, as we bring this chateau back to life for others to enjoy as much as we do. Follow us, Angelina and Phil, along with the highs and lows of our Chateau life. It's been a difficult year for everyone. We're obviously no exception. I often have to go back to the UK for work to support what we're trying to do here. With no events this year, I've had to go back a little earlier. So it was with a heavy heart, I said goodbye to France. It's never easy leaving your home and your family, but the sunrise as I arrived in Portsmouth helped cheer me up. Of course, that's the calm before the storm and a train into central London. It feels so strange to be back on the tube. It's a million miles away from rural France. Hey guys, I'm off on an evening stroll in London. As you know, I'm away working, so I'm going to be just uh, out for a wonder, get some exercise, and remember what I kind of love about London.
Last stop for the evening is my favourite pub in this area. It was this beer garden in January 2012 where I first met Angelina and where my life changed for the better. So what better place when you're missing somebody than here where you first met them to relax a little bit before going back to work tomorrow. So this week, as I'm still painting um, the Sun Terrace furniture and waiting for paint to literally dry, such as, you know, the sign, the arrow before I can hang it, I thought I would um, change the scene a little bit because I'm getting a bit bored of that and I'm sure you are too. <laughs> and um, create a video which I've been wanting to make for quite some time. It's very special to me and I'm sure you will absolutely love it. Now this video is all about why I love living here. It's an incredible video that took me almost a year to film because I wanted to capture each stages of each season living here and how this place changes, what beautiful wildlife we have, what beautiful nature then comes alive, different flowers throughout the seasons and some special wildlife that we have here which I, I, I struggle to film, I'm going to be honest, because they are so evasive, but they are incredible. So I thought this would be a little insight into what this place is like, sort of behind the scenes that you would hardly ever see, actually. So I hope you enjoy it. As you know, we are completely surrounded by a moat and we have three gardens, the front with the chapel, the middle on an island where the chateau and the sun terrace is and the back garden with the bridge that Phil built. It's a beautiful place and every season in the year it gives me something new to look forward to. Take for instance in winter when it's cold, wet and miserable. I've got these stunning camellia bushes that provide me these beautiful pink flowers all over it. And I've also got variegated one that has white and pink flowers. It gives me something to look forward to for when the summer comes. But this is the first splash of colour. Then in March, I get the splash of pink colour all over these elephant's ears that we have on the lawn edging. Even our grass is full of wonderful surprises with pinks, whites, blues, and lavender colored wonderful flowers. They've been there since day one and they just pop up as soon as a bit of sun and warmth comes through.
Even the long driveway to the chateau comes alive and is full of flowers. And even daffodils love to pop up and make an appearance. They are such happy yellow little flowers. I absolutely love them. They are the sign of spring is coming. And then when April comes, everything truly comes alive with a huge splash display of colors. And then in early May, we have the beautifully scented Lily of the Valley pop up. And as you know, we are surrounded by these azaleas all around our moat. And when they come into flower season, it's a solid display of two to three weeks of these wonderful display of colors. They are so strong and so beautiful looking. And even the ducks enjoy the beautiful view on my floating platform. The duck house has served them well and they have settled in beautifully on it. The best thing about them is once the flowers drop, they drop onto our water in the moat and they look like they are floating water lilies. It's so beautiful. Everything loves the warmer days of the summer. Take a look at a beautiful and huge grey carp swimming about and sunbathing. They really enjoy the sunshine and soak it up as much as possible and there are lots of them. I count about 12 in here but the biggest amount I've ever been able to count as they were all sunbathing on the surface is about 30 and they are all huge, it's incredible. It's really a sight to see. Now the water quality has improved a lot over the years. So much so that even this uh, grass, water grass has started to pop up. Now it might look like weed, but it does oxygenate the water and improve its quality. And that lets me know I'm doing something right. Now the type of fish that we have here swimming about in the moat are common grey carp, a mirrored carp, a common goldfish, I've even managed to see some baby perch. We definitely have a good balance of ecosystem and have a pike swimming about, they do hunt other fish they are predators but that's what keeps the balance and not having too many fish in one place we have even once spotted that we have crayfish about in the moat and of course we have huge mussels here that attract other animals and other predators that hunt for them the mussels found here in our moat are usually the size of our hands, so it's a pretty decent meal for two animals. So let's talk about the land animals that come and eat those. It's koipu and muskrats that come and eat those mussels. Now they do look cute and furry, but they are invasive. We also have amazing kingfisher. They are the most beautiful blue colors and they fly so effortlessly. They're a bit like a hummingbird. And they only feed on fish from our moat. We even have a heron about. He loves it here, but I can never catch a good video image of him. He's very elusive. They all hunt for fish by diving into the water and snatching them out. 
I even started to see this new arrival of a new bird around that also eats fish. So it's letting me know that the fish population and the quality of water is great so that they can see what they are hunting for. And of course we have many other wildlife here that is beautiful in its own right. And we're constantly discovering new ones that we have about as well. Take for instance, recently we discovered that we have an apple tree growing hidden away amongst all the trees and the forest. It was absolutely beautiful when it was in bloom. Lightning enjoys sunbathing on the sun terrace along with mummy. But he does it more often. And you'll recall that we have a beautiful peacock called Clyde who loves to show off his feathers. We've even had some young deer come for a drink of water at times from our moat. And then in summer, all the flowers are blooming and they stay blooming until the end of the summer. In episode 13, we explain to you how the, which brings me to my big vision that I want to share with you. And here is what it looks like. General pollution and breakdown of all the debris and it's full up to the silt. And every year it's rising and rising as there is more and more each year. And it has accumulated over the years. So much so that it's, piling up in the corners in most of places and we would like to clear this in the near future and this is the importance of the water for the wildlife here and we care for it so much because it's beautiful to watch it grow all living creatures depend on it from the fish to the birds to the ducks to the feral cats that we have around as well and muskrats and everything in between. But slowly we're making progress and making plans to change this and improve. Which brings me to my big vision that I want to share with you. And here is what it looks like. This is called water landscaping. Just like on land, you have full of flowers when you do landscaping, but this time, it's with water and there are many aquatic plants that I can add from water lilies to these Japanese irises to mosaic plants and many many more. I would like the chateau that is surrounded by a moat to be filled full of flowers which will provide a safe haven for little fish and aquatic wildlife as well as help to clean and improve the water quality.
So I managed to get some water lilies for the water here from somebody locally. I only managed to get three pieces, but that's enough to get started. So that's what I'm going to be doing today is planting them in the moat somewhere here. This is roughly the idea where I want this. It's incredibly shallow. That's why I've chose this spot. And also it's become more and more sunnier as we've removed some dying trees and shrubbery here. Ducks are here to help naturally with, I guess, moral support. They're very inquisitive as to what's going on, thinking I have a tree, but I don't. Anyway, so I was thinking maybe to plant uh, right there so it's nice and stable. So any wind blowing, it's not gonna carry it away. Um, but yeah, this is about a foot deep. And as you can see, the ducks are getting on very, very well together, cleaning the moat, cleaning themselves, and everything is great. My idea is to plant them in these pots. Now, they're regular pots with holes at the bottom for drainage because the aquatic one, proper ones, are very, very expensive. So I will be making some more of my own ones and uh, as alternatives. Anyway, so I'm gonna use some of the silt out of the um, moat. Now, some of it is not broken down, obviously, the uh, composition. So I'll use stuff like that, leaves, sticks, everything that there is, and fill that up. That'll be great nutrients and great start. Here they are, roughly all similar size. What I have here, you're gonna laugh because you always see me use, you know, general everyday tools or whatever, tools, normal tools for something completely different. This is a horse manure shit shoveler, literally. And I got this of my friend. <laughs> they gave it to me as a, you know, as a good present seeing as I desperately needed because I told them I want to use it to literally like shove silt and broken down debris out of the mold because it's really great goodness and um, have it in my kitchen garden compost or whatever or for this project and the great thing about this design which I couldn't find anywhere online is that it's ribbed here like zigzagged so the sticks are not going to get caught or the leaves are not going to get impaled and obviously the water can go through it easily. So I love this design. This is why I begged them if I can have it. All right, let's get some of them in. Let's get one inside here. Oh God, it doesn't even want to go in because there's just that much silt, which is okay. I think I wanted the um, lid to stick out a bit. And as I say, when the wind blows or there's a storm or something like that, I think I'll rake up some of the um, silt close around the, um, around the uh, pot to stop it from blowing away, which has happened many times. Uh, I have learned from my mistakes and just the way things work, you know, I'm not an expert. All right, so this one can be here. Go on, go in. <laughs> it's a good start I do want it all in the middle in sort of like a zigzag shape a lot of water lilies so as they multiply in a year's time or so maybe I buy some more that's the plan alrighty and another one so this is going easy. I thought this would be quite daunting, so I'm quite happy with that. Come on, get in. There we go, perfect. Now, Filmer has mentioned before that he has um, built this bridge himself because the old one had rotted away and nowhere to be seen and we needed a bridge to be able to access that land rather than going all the way around that property through a field etc so this is great now i think we'll start with actually these i don't know where they are full rushes or something i think i'll put them in first in the middle so they'll be quite free actually they're not gonna have a pot but that's okay <laughs> It's 
dirty job, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> Just move this out of the way to get them in that. It's okay, it's a good start. Not sure what Phil will think of this, but I think it's something, it's great, you know, it starts cleaning the water. I think like on these rockeries, this is granite is cement just to hold up the obviously the 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 bridge so it doesn't sort of collapse and stuff for strength. I think I'll put like nice rockery flowers. Um, it'll be quite nice to have like rockery flowers here because they don't need much water. So I think that'll be a really great idea. Right, the next thing. I think I'll stabilize. There's so many sticks here. God, it's like cement, this stuff. has compacted so much over the years. It really is like cement, honestly. Well, uh, I did not see that happening. All right, well, that's not gonna stop me. I'm just gonna carry on. <laughs> now for the water ladies. So here they are, here's a close-up. Wonderful, I can't get, wait to get some more. It's the next day and I've done a bit more research about the depth of uh, water lilies, how deep they have to go and I realised that I have to sort of submerge them deeper because the, um, the leaves that are currently there on stems, they have to be like floating or just barely touching the water. And then they grow obviously longer and give new leaf shoots. So that's what I'm here to rectify my issue. Because obviously at the moment they're babies, sort of. And uh, I thought I'd just dunk them in like this without getting back in the water. Here is what the area around the bridge used to look like, full of weeds and overgrown. And here is what it looks like now, nice and clear. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, you know, I'm off away working in London and uh, thank you for sharing my little journey um, that I went on to uh, keep myself occupied. Um, I hope it was nice to see a different side of things. It's lovely to see Chateau life and of course London life. They're very, very different. Um, so I think Angelina has said, obviously how much we are trying to save everything. It's not just the house, it's not just history. It's a lot of wildlife and nature. And um, uh, this year more than any year, um, I've had to get away to work to put money in the pot to try to do all of that at the Chateau. And um, you know that's what we do, it's what we love, it's great, but it's always gonna take money. Um, you guys are fantastic in helping because you watch this channel. Uh, every little bit this channel does make through ad revenue and uh, things like our Amazon links. Um, we do earn a very small amount of money if you buy something through Amazon through one of our links and things like Buy Me a Coffee Patron and um, thank you to all those people. It all goes back into the chateau. Um, it's all just an extra way of uh, finding extra money to pot. So thank you so much for watching. Um, when you can do watch the ads, it does help us. But also, uh, and most important, just, just share um, our videos and stuff because it's, uh, it really helps more people watch it, the more little pennies that we get to, uh, to add back into the chateau and make it even better and hopefully make good videos for you guys. I really hope you enjoyed this week's video and um, please, uh, please do like, share and if you haven't yet, 
subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. Um, if you um, haven't bought us a coffee uh, and you want to, the link is in the description below. The same with our Patreon page. There is a link to that if you'd like to look at behind the scenes stuff. And of course, thank you everybody to our patrons who really help us out, to everyone that's bought us a coffee, and of course, to all of you guys for watching and helping us uh, and letting the channel grow. So thank you so much. I've now got to run and get a train because I've only had five minutes. So apologies, this was uh, a little bit rushed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.